and welcome to the Streamsy community call for August 24th. Uh, the first point on the agenda are PRs and issues, but I didn't find anything what would mean discussion. Does anyone have anything, any PR or issue they would want to raise and discuss? Okay, there doesn't seem to be anything. Uh, as for the proposals, uh, the proposal about stopping connectors from Mikhail was merged now. Uh, it was approved and there are still a bunch of other proposals for review. And at least the two of them, uh, which I linked here, they have already some uh, plus one vote. That's the one about infinite auto restart of Kafka connectors and uh, from me and the one from Kyle about the cruise control API users. Uh, so uh, please have a look at all the proposals and especially at those two as soon the vote might close for these. Anyone has anything to raise? Anything else to the proposals? Uh, I'd like to discuss the Kafka router, but looks like Paro and Tom, Mikhail, Tina, Anna here. Mikhail is here. Anyway, let's let's try that and see how we can get. Um, so here's this one I would like to discuss. So do you have something you want to raise, Luke, or because uh, could you open this? quite hard yeah. without Paolo, who's the author of it? Yeah, I think since Kate and Mikhail is here, we can have a quick thing. Maybe we can have some conclusion. So you can scroll down to the Kate's uh, reply to list all the configs about controllers. Yeah, here. So uh, I I was trying to think about the this the the list of configs. So we can just we can try to focus on some of them. Let's say uh, the controller listener names. So let's say we have one controller. Let's say okay, three controllers and three brokers. Okay, and the controller listener names is used when we when the brokers and controllers are you are how they can connect to the controllers so when we update this config either in controller or broker one of them will not will not connect will not talk to the controllers anymore that means i'm thinking should we allow users to change this config? You know, otherwise, none of the the the, the connection between broker and controller are down basically. So the my understanding is the so the comparison we're doing is um which configurations have changed and should we roll the controller? The set of configurations that we're reviewing, I believe, are set by both the user, but also the ones set by Strimzy. So at the moment, in the um, list of disallowed configuration settings, I think everything that's um, prefixed with controller dot, the users aren't allowed to edit at the moment. But Strimzy might edit it. So that's why we've included it. 
I don't have the class open anymore, I don't think. But from memory, I think the ones the users can't set are controller dot star, and then they can't set process dot roles or node ID. I can't yeah. remember any others. That's correct. Yeah, they cannot set these three. Yeah, but this list is a list to we pay attention to both the ones the users have set, but also the ones that Strimsy has configured. So if Strimsy changes the configuration, then we may also need to roll the controller, is my understanding. I'm not sure that... Fred, but are these controller only configuration or are you also looking for configuration when the broker is in both modes? Yeah, so the way this proposal is um, proposing we do things is that we keep our existing mechanism for rolling brokers. So all of the existing checks that we do to roll a broker still stand. And then we're doing a separate check to see if we should roll it from a controller perspective. So if it's a combined mode and it's both broker and controller, then we'll basically just do two checks. We'll check from a controller perspective. If we think we need to restart it, then we'll restart it. If we don't think we need to restart it, but it's combined, we'll also do the broker checks that we normally do. This list here represents the configurations that we think if they've changed in a controller, whether it's a normal controller or a combined mode controller, then we should roll the controller. So there are some here that would also trigger a restart in broker mode, or they might just be dynamic in broker mode. But either way, these are the ones that we think if you're a controller, we should care about them. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is could we um, blacklist or yeah, ignore some of the conflict changes so that we can protect our cluster uh, workable. Another case is like the controller quorum voters, which are which is a list of the voters, which are the, the, the voters or controllers we have. That, that means if we add more voters and then roll a controller, that means other nodes will not know, okay, you, you already changed that. I didn't know that. So yeah, there will be some problems between within this cluster. So I, I'm just trying to uh, propose that we, could we uh, blacklist some of the configs so that we can, we won't allow users to change that to make sure our cluster is workable. These are not user configurable. These, a lot of these might be generated by the operator itself. Cool. So if you if you disable, for example, changing controller quorum voters, that means that you basically disallow changing the architecture. Like if that's a Kafka limitation, then I'm really curious how could have someone in Kafka called it production ready? If you can't, for example, scale the quorum up or down or or change it in some way. But if it's not a Kafka limitation, we need to figure out how this should work because the users will expect that they can scale the controller quorum and so on. But these fields will not be changed the way that the user edits the, the configuration of the Kafka cluster and says there that controller quorum voters should now be uh, this string. But the way this is, for example, configured is that basically the user says that the cluster should have five controller quorum nodes, like five nodes with the processor or controller. And out of that, we generate basically the, the configuration of the, of the quorum voters. So, so the operator controls this, not the user directly. But in a way, I think unless there is some Kafka limitation, then there needs to be a way how to change this because that's how you that's what you need to change when you scale the cluster or when you decide that for example you want to have a separate controller quorum now instead of mixed nodes and so on so 
Yeah, okay, I see that. So uh, clarify one thing. So about the scale up, uh, scale down the voters. Uh, in pre before the North Pole in iBot, it already works. So I think after North Pole issue also works. So at, at least currently in Shindy, it works when we scale down, scale up, scale up the voters. And if not comes from the not comes from the operator now users to change the the config in then I think it should be fine. Okay. So, Luke, the um the code where we have configured the specific configurations that we're blocking users from setting, um Tina found the link. So she's posted it in the chat and I've also put it in the meeting notes as well. So if you want to have a look at the specific settings that we prevent users from setting, then there's a link to the code. Just, oh. just if you look into it, be aware that few lines below are the exceptions to the forbidden prefixes. So the users can, for example, configure the different timeouts for the quorum election and so on. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, then we can discuss offline. Okay, anything else to this proposal or any other proposal? If not, I guess we can move to the issue triage. There are a few issues for triage. Uh, this one is about some issue between cruise control and Kafka when the interbroker rebalance is triggered. To me, it seems like this is unlikely to be a streams issue, but with no Paolo, no Kyle and so on, I'm not sure if we have enough people who understand cruise control to say that for sure. Mikhail Shubham, do you have maybe some idea? Uh, I was going through this issue in the morning, but I also saw Kyle's update, and Kyle has written that this is probably a cruise control bug and not a streams event. So, and yeah, he was investigating this as he also mentioned about this on the standard. So, I think that it's such. It's a bug upstream in cruise control and not from Strangey side. But yeah, I'll like, have a look again. Okay. So, what do we do with this? Should I write there that it looks like a cruise control bug, but keep it open for the next? Call where Paul and Carl should be in as well. Yeah, yeah.
Okay, like this. Yes. Okay. Next one is something what we raised with uh, with Tom Bentley based on some discussion on Slack, and that's basically that in general the in Kafka Connect the spec image and spec build output image should not really be pointing to the same image because otherwise basically every time the build is image is triggered it's basically building kind of in a loop taking the previous build output as input and building on top of it and so on. So the idea was that we should try to validate this and throw some error in case of they are the same. I hope this won't break it for some users for whom it's by coincidence working because for example, the build was triggered only once so far but this seems to cause issues and I guess it would be good to have it valid validated. Anyone has any thoughts on this? Does it sound reasonable? Sounds reasonable to me. Okay. I think this could make a good start issue or Okay. The next issue is from a user who seems to have issue with the quick start provisioning of the persistent volumes. Uh, I guess I would propose to convert this to a discussion because that doesn't seem to be a general problem, just some environment issue. Does that sound reasonable to everyone? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right discussion. So the next issue is about configuring a custom memory setup for Java. Right now, the way Strings works is if the user configures, for example, the XMX option for maximal heap size, then we let it go through and we don't enforce the strings settings, but if the user wants to use, for example, the max RAM percentage option to set it not to absolute value, but using the percentage, then uh, that's actually ignored and strings kind of pass its own generated values. So the idea is that we should check not just that the uh, XMS or XMX is set, but also the 
ROM percentages, which sounds fairly reasonable to me as something that could be done. Yeah, sounds reasonable to me as well. That said, I think it's maybe more enhancement than a buck. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if this is a good start because the way these things are configured in the Java code and in the shell script, I think that's a bit of a mess. Does anyone have some strong opinions on whether it should be a good start or not? I think you need a good description in the issue of where the code is in order for it to be marked a good start. Yeah, and I don't think we have that. No. Like the problem is that like out of my head, I don't remember what's the best place to do it because I think it's actually in the shell script, some of the stuff. And some of the stuff is in the operator code, so it's a bit mess. So I guess let's leave it just as help wanted if someone wants to work on it. And then the last issue was about adding a template for the client CA certificate. I guess we already triaged it last time. I wanted to better understand the motivation, but we didn't got any. So should we close it or? I guess we can close it and then ask the user if if we find like if he has some things maybe we can reopen this yeah it's like the way the user explained it it doesn't make sense to me because normally you should not need it so yeah So like this, does it make yes. sense? Good. And I guess that's it for the triage. So one more thing which I wanted to raise so that people are aware of it. Uh, there's a plan to do a call about the LFX mentoring and about the new MQTT bridge project, which is scheduled for, I think, Thursday, 14 September for 3 p.m. Central European time. Uh, that's still a few weeks ahead, but just that people are aware of it and can plan with it if they are interested. And that's the end of the agenda. Does anyone have anything else they want to raise and discuss? Hearing nothing, I guess that's it for today. So thanks for joining and uh, 
see you around on our Slack and GitHub discussions and so on. Thank you, Abel. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Thank Thanks you. Everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.